tonight. The first convicts to ever break out of this maximum security prison are on the run, two days and counting. They could be... Do we have to watch the news? I mean, seriously. There's something better on. Well, no, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> what, you don't want to watch the news? Come no, on! let's put on a it's Christmas, Christmas movie or something. Come on. Oh, well, I don't know. It's not going to be one long collapse of the news anyway. What's it with the news? This is cute. This is cute. This is cute. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's lost in the air. Oh, you broke that. No, you did. <laughs> you tell him, Mom. You tell him. I voted for the same person every year for the last three years. <laughs> hey. <laughs> What is it? Oh my god, I can't believe this guy. Look at this deluxe ass clown. I mean, who's gonna lead this new world order? Him? You can't lead a bunch of drunks to a bar. Come on, you sung his praises at the Madisons last night. Yeah, well, that was just because I was being agreeable. Because they're your friends. But you know how these card carrying NRA types can get like when you disagree with them. Come on, Russ and Gail are okay. I know. Well, this turkey isn't. He, he's dangerous. You know, you really should turn that thing off. You know how to get you all worked up. Well, I like to keep in touch with what's going on in the world. Besides, Linnea, you should be paying attention to this too, you know. It could affect your future. I don't know, Dad. It seems like a bunch of fear-mongering to me. I mean, I watch the news and it's all war and death. And I look outside and all I can hear are crickets. I think if you unplug from the media, life is a lot simpler. Hmm, you should listen to this girl. She's got her head screwed on right. Don't you think, Mom? Sure. She talks a lot more sense than Richard. <laughs> oh, you never miss an opportunity to shoot me with a good zinger, do you, Della? You know, I really can't resist an easy target. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look who decided to grace us with her presence. You were up late last night. <laughs> we're on vacation. Well, maybe you should lay off that stuff. It's affecting your sleep. Relax, Ma. It's not like I'm shooting crack. Now, don't be crass. Hey, uh, sweetheart, you want to go into town with me later? I need to pick up a few presents. Oh, last minute as always. <laughs> what, just us? Yeah, I could use your advice on what I should get. Um, what are the rest of you doing? Your mom um, is taking Linnea and I over to the lake. <laughs> and I'm not invited? Hey! Hey, come on. What am I, chopped liver over here? Come on. Don't you want to hang out with your dear old dad? Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. favoritism strikes again. Hey. She wants you to go to the lake with Gramps, not me. Oh, come on. Are you being over-sensitive? No, she always does stuff like this. You know, when we move out, I bet they preserve your room like a shrine. They'll turn mine into a gym. <laughs> it's not funny. I'm not laughing at you. I'm picturing Dad in a gym. 
<laughs> right? So I did want this to be the one gift that you get to open on Christmas Eve, but I want you to have it now. What is it? Open it and find out. You have a beautiful gift for writing. I thought this might help you to use it more. <laughs> I only got you socks. <laughs> Look, I don't know what's going on with you and mom, but I'm sure things will work themselves out. I love you, okay? I love you too. Do you like it? I love it. <laughs> One from the station down on Fort Creek. It was a pretty nasty beating on the side of the road. Happened right on the border, so they're just keeping us in the loop. Well, who was the victim? A girl in her 20s. She's at the hospital in a coma. Doctors don't know she'll make it. Jesus Christ. Someone cracked her in the head and took off with a car. Okay. Sheriff's office. Yeah, okay, Marvin, okay, calm down. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we'll be right over. Yeah. Marvin Elrod. Someone broke into his store last night. You're kidding. You better go take a look. How's it going? Can't complain. Cool. Are you still coming over later? It's going to be a little later than planned. Susie's got a doctor's appointment and her car broke down. I got to take her. Oh, okay. Um, there's no problem. Is she coming over with you? Nah, she's working the two till ten shift tonight. All right. Um, oh, um, we're going out for a couple hours later. Um, just in case we're not back when you get here, I'm going to leave a key under the map by the front door. Thanks, Rich. I'll see you later. All right. See you later. Hey, you still going to go out with me later or what? Sure. You didn't seem too happy about it earlier. Oh, come on, I've barely gotten up. <laughs> you know, before my first coffee, I'm a mess. <laughs> yeah, you're not much of a morning person. I wasn't either until I met your mother. You know, it's funny how getting woken up at 7 a.m. for 30 years old gets you into routine. <laughs> hey. You know, she just gives us a hard time because she loves us. Yeah, I know. But she's still your biggest fan. Yeah? I mean, she still gushes about all the stories you wrote in school. <laughs> What's with the big sal, Dad? Well, I'm noticing uh, a little bit of tension between you two lately. <clears throat> yeah, it's just mother-daughter stuff, I guess. Nothing for you to worry about. Well, I do worry about it. A lot. It's my prerogative as a father. I'm allowed to. And you know why. I mean, I lost my mother when I was your age. And, you know, I never really got a chance to tell her how much she meant to me. Sometimes you don't know what you got till it's gone. Unusually profound for you, Dad. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm just kind of a sucker for this time of year. <laughs> yep, once the Christmas trees go up, I get all warm and gooey inside and sentimental about family. The rest of your y'all are just a pain in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know I wouldn't have to do it. <laughs> 
So, are we going to Midnight Mass on Christmas Eve? Well, you're a stickler for tradition, so I guess so. You know, I wish you went to church every Sunday. We're not going to have this conversation again, are we? I just don't know where I lost you. Oh, you never lost me, Mom. The church did. Hmm? But you never explained why. Not in detail. Well, you still go to church. I wouldn't want to denigrate that. I'm a big girl, Pat. I can take it. Okay. Do you remember that year I went touring with the local church before the kids were born and then I went to Ghana for a couple of weeks? Yeah, I remember. Well, this may come as a surprise to you, but there are a lot of corrupt churches here in the U.S. I know because I spent most of that year at them. There was this one church. It was Easter Sunday. And right before the service, the pastors are screaming at each other, arguing over money. You know, I saw so many things that year that made me realize that the church is just blinded by capitalism and, 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 and desperate to keep a grip on authority. You know, Mom, sometimes I wondered if they actually read the same New Testament we did. There was this one church. They were holding a fundraiser for $40,000 for a parking lot. Oh, they already had a perfectly functioning parking lot. No, but they needed another one, a nicer one. And they were prepared to fleece their flock to get it. You know, when you see enough of the dirty underbelly of the church, you just, you're left with a really nasty taste in your mouth. It, it's all just politics, hypocrisy, and, and, and gossip. And it completely obscures the true message of Christianity. Wow. Tell me what you really think, Pat. Well, you asked, Mom. <laughs> How must you feel, then, about me going to a place every week that you think is so corrupt? Mom, I know you have a genuine belief. Just because the institution is corrupt doesn't mean your faith is. Hmm? Do you have a faith? I do. I do, but I don't need the church to tell me what to believe. I have my own perception of a higher power. Well, I'm glad you have something, some faith. And why does it matter to you? You know, as you get older, you begin to recognize your own mortality. It's difficult not to think of the inevitable. I'm just comforted by the fact that I'm part of God's plan and that, well, there's more to everything than just this physical world. I love you, Mom. Love you too, honey. <laughs> Let's get soup. Yeah. <laughs> Damn kids these days don't respect nothing. I ran this business 20 years, never had a problem. Now, they break in and ransack the joint. So you gotta look at them? Nah. They broke in after I closed up for the night. Then how do you know it was kids? Stole a couple masks from the novelty department. What kind of an adult wants that shit? They take anything else? Cleared out the register. I'd already cashed up, so they didn't get much. A few dollars, some change. Clothes rail got turned over. Think they took some coats. Probably needed them, scruffy little bastards. Uh, what else? They also took my firearms. One pistol from under the counter, another one from the office upstairs. You got permits for those, right? Who are you investigating here, Sonny? Me or the thieves? Just routine questions, Marv. Nothing personal. You got a camera set up in the store? Never thought I needed one. Till now. Okay. Deputy Wilson and I will take a look around. In the meantime, just try to relax. How can anyone relax with this kind of thing going on? You want to know who I blame? All that heavy metal polluting the minds of our children, encouraging devil worship, and all that satanic nonsense. Those headbangers, they're a danger to God-fearing folk everywhere. What do you think? I think he needs to chill the fuck out. <laughs> heavy metal is awesome. About the robbery. <laughs> Masks, guns, I guess it could be kids. Or something very different. Like what? 
Someone could be gearing up for another robbery. Something bigger. Makes sense. But what are the potential targets around here? The liquor store, the bank? Maybe. Tell you what, I'll get Richards and Daniel to take a patrol downtown. If anything's about to happen, maybe a police presence will deter it. I'm thinking. Let's take a look around. <laughs> oh, hey, we'll catch you back here around two. Sure, bye. 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 Oh, shit. What is it? Uh, John Boba Beatty died. Well, who's that? I used to run with the Candy Bandits gang back in Chicago. What's your interest in a mafioso? Before I came to Oakley, I used to work in Plumas County. Yeah, I remember. I ever tell you why I left? Something about corruption in the department, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Back in 81, we were called to a quadruple homicide at a cabin in a resort town of Keddie. Yeah. Was that the murder of a whole family, yeah? Yeah. The worst crime scene I've ever seen. Four people savagely butchered. Mother, Sue, son, Johnny, daughter, Tina, and a family friend, Dana. Tina's skull was found a few years later, a couple of years after I left the department. Her body had been removed from the cabin for some reason. I was the initial responder to the 911 call. I saw those bodies, and that sight will never leave me. The killers had stabbed and pummeled everything inside the, the walls the people the furniture everything there was blood everywhere i knew right away it was the work of a total psychopath there was a couple living a few few cabins down same resort marty and marilyn <laughs> when i interviewed marty he was so concerned about deflecting blame and throwing suspicion on others he slipped up so many times in the interview, I knew he had something to do with it. Marty was friends with Bo, who happened to be staying with him at the time of the murders. Wait a minute, if memory serves, that case is still unsolved, yeah? Yeah. Came out years later that drug trafficking may have had something to do with it. I mean, God knows what they were all involved in down there. All I knew is I couldn't do my job. So I got out. But there's not a day goes by, I don't think about the ones that got away. You know, we all got those regrets. The ones that got away. I've been lucky in that most of the murder cases I worked have been solved. But the Reggie Fallon case, it still plays on my mind. Yeah, what happened with that one? Back in the 60s, Fallon taught at Redbridge High School where he sexually abused some boys. We began investigating, but before we could make an arrest, Fallon quits his job and disappears. Then a few years later, we found out that he'd been back teaching in several counties across Utah, using different names and forged documents. Decades went by. Then one of the abused boys, now an adult, bumps into Fallon here in Oakley. This guy, Frank, he takes advantage of the chance encounter gets a hold of Fallon's address and phone number, which he passes on to us. I interviewed Frank, then went looking for the files from the 1960s. A few of the old-timers on staff remember a box with Reggie Fallon written on the side. No one knew where it had gone. 
So, I have to start all over again. Tracking down abused boys using old school photos and other records, all with Frank's help. I found 18 victims in total. A uh, few were keen to prosecute, yeah? Others were dead. Some just wanted to put a bit behind them and get on with their lives. But we had nine of them on board. And a very strong case against Fallon. Then I found out he fled to Australia. So after a lot of bureaucratic red tape, an extradition order is issued. But before the time came for the extradition hearing, Fallon hobbles in and presents himself as having several serious health issues. The judge rules he's too sick to travel. Yet the cops over there tell me that Fallon, whose lawyer had argued could barely walk and was about to die, was spotted near his home, walking freely and unaided. He played the judge for a fool. It's a tough thing to have to take. After reopening old wounds for all the victims, I had to tell him, sorry, he abused you and ruined your life, but he's not gonna do one day in jail and he's not gonna be brought back. It's the most horrific thing to have to tell someone after you got their hopes up. Injustice like that can really, really chip away at you. It's a tough thing to take. Yeah, but you shouldn't let it get you down. It should spur you on to make it right. And unfortunately, that's something that will always happen in this job, because there's never a shortage of evil behavior. So there'll always be a chance to make it right. And find redemption. Don't look, don't move, don't even breathe. It'll be the last breath you ever take. Well, did Richard and Tina come back? Oh, they couldn't do this. Look what's coming. Oh, where is everything? But did Tina and Richard come back early? Why would they do this? I don't know. This? Mom, where is everything? Mom, 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 mom. Oh my god, mom. Oh my god. I told you to keep quiet. <laughs> in your purse. Give it to me. Okay. Okay. Here, here. Please just take it and leave us alone. Please. That's all you got? Yes, yes. Just, just take us. Don't, don't, don't hurt us, please. Please. Give me your purse. I won't. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Yes, you did. I said I'm not giving you my purse. Mom, just give it to him. Shut the fuck up! Please. 
Now let's try this again. Give me your fucking press. I've worked hard all my life for my money. I'm not giving it to a monster like you. Looks <laughs> like we got a hero. You want to be a hero, Grandma? Mom, please, just give it to him. If you don't give me your fucking purse, by the time I count to three, I will be prying it from your cold, dead fingers. Okay, you win, you win. <laughs> Jesus. You're in a big place like this, you can't be fucking poor. We're just a normal family, please. We're not rich. I guess we'll just wait for Pops to come back, huh? Maybe we should take the car and find us a place where they got some real money. I feel sorry for your mothers. Well, you got some spunk for an old broad. I like that. You feel sorry for who? Come on. Say it again. Who do you feel sorry for? Just get out of here. First, answer the question. Who do you feel sorry for? Just get the you hell out! Stay the fuck out! Oh, you animal! You had the courage to say it once. Just say it again. Your life may just depend on it. I said I feel sorry for your mother. down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. <laughs> you had to pray, huh? <laughs> Answer me this. If there's a God and you believe in him, why isn't he striking me down right now to save you? What? I mean, why doesn't he send a fucking lightning bolt to crush in my skull and save one of his faithful? He may not strike you down now, but believe me, he will. Oh, he will. One day. Always a fucking answer. Always an answer as to why the big man don't show up. Have you ever thought about this? Maybe he just ain't fucking there. Huh? Or maybe he just doesn't give a shit about you, about me, about any of this. Finish your fucking prayer. I'm not praying for you. You better fucking start. If you don't start praying to your God, then you're going to be meeting him a lot earlier than you planned. Now I've laid me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Amen. <laughs> Fuck is your problem? 
I thought we were just gonna take their money and call and get out of here. Yo, know, plans fucking change. Deal with it. It's just the. Are you going soft on me? No. Look, I ain't here to fuck around, okay? Yeah? Someone's giving me shit. Someone's getting in my way. One way or another, they're getting out of my fucking way. If you don't understand that, then go get yourself a Born to Lose tattoo and get your chicken ass back to the slammer. Do you understand me? Yes, man, I understand. He's the fuck up on your enemy. When's Pops coming back, huh? Please, please, we haven't seen your faces, so we can't identify you, okay? Please, just let us go. Please. Please. Identify us. You know what that means, don't you? What? We can't leave any witnesses. ain't gonna do us any good. What about a hostage? That could help if you get, get caught by the police. You volunteering? Yes. 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 yes, yes. Take me, let my daughter go, please. Please. What do you think? I don't know, if we, if we run into trouble on the road, it could give us something to bargain with. That's a good point. <laughs> okay, we'll take a hostage. The thing is, we're only gonna need one of you. Okay, take me, just let my daughter go, please. We can't let anyone go. You've, you've seen our faces. No. One of you is gonna be our hostage. And the other one, it's the, uh, it's the end of the road. No, no, no please. Take my mom. Please no, take Lydia, my mom. no, stop, please. Let me see. Shut the fuck up, both of you. If you can't make a decision, I'm gonna have to make it for you. No. It's okay, it's okay. No.
Then why don't you? Because I'm a fucking professional! Look, we're gonna be taken off soon, and we need leverage. You really think the cops are gonna take a shot at us with your pretty little ass in the car? Now get the fuck back to the cabin! <laughs> Had trouble? I took care of it. Drink? No. Get her a drink. I said I didn't want one. Look, I'm trying to keep things civil. You call killing people civil? Those two gave me shit and they paid the price you keep your mouth shut you do exactly as I say you got nothing to fear from me okay drink your fucking drink home, huh? Ed, be a dear and run outside and welcome him. Leave him alone. Listen ah! to me. Listen to me. You make a fucking sound and daddy goes down for the dirt nap. You understand? Huh? <laughs> Hello? Who are you? You were a fucking nightmare. Now get the fuck inside. Oh, all right, all right. Just take it easy. Take it easy. Okay. okay. Come on, princess. Move it. Dad. Oh my God, are you okay? Move it. She's fucking okay, pops. 
as much as she's been through already, it's gonna get a hell of a lot worse if you don't do exactly as I say. You got that? Okay, okay. <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> Where the fuck you going, Pops? That's enough pops come. Time for you to start worrying about the family members who are still alive, yeah? Hmm? What do you want? First thing, all the money in your wallet and your credit cards. Then I want you to write down those pin numbers, okay? What are you doing, Sheriff? That beating at the roadside. The one on the border of Fort Creek. Yeah, what about it? That happened over here. At Devil's Point, right? Yeah, Fort Creek PD said the stolen car was seen head in east. Marvin's store is over here on Madison. The only road coming into Oakley from Devil's Point runs right past there. So what are you saying, Sheriff? Maybe the guys who stole the car are the same people who robbed Marvin's store. What makes you say that? Facts just came through. Two escaped convicts from Salt Lake County. Von Taylor and Edward Delhi. Von Taylor was convicted of aggravated burglary. Delhi for arson. I'm guessing they're only serving short sentences for those convictions. Why the hell would somebody break out? <laughs> Who knows? Some men just can't stand to be caged. You think they're in town? Possibly. Or they could have passed through already. But if these two did rob Marvin's store, then they're armed, and we need to be vigilant. These better be the right numbers, Pops, because if I get to the bank and I find out you stiff me, I'm going to kill these girls, yeah? They are the right numbers. I wouldn't mess around with my daughter's lives. Good. Okay. I'm going to need the keys to your car. Okay. Are you leaving now? Yeah. We're taking these two little bombshells with us. Oh, you don't need them. <laughs> two little white chicks up here in Mormon country could come in handy if we need to negotiate with the cops. Okay, look. Fine. Then just take me and let them go. Look, they've been through enough. I'm sorry, Pops. Two's company, three's a crowd, okay? I'm gonna need you to stay here with your wife. Permanently.
shoot this motherfucker. No, no. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Shoot him. I want to see you fucking shoot him. You don't have to do this. Shut up! Please don't. You really gonna come at me, huh? After what happened to Mama and that old bitch, huh? The fuck are you waiting for? Shoot him! Shit house. Fuck you. Can you come here and look after these little girls for me? Do you think you can handle that? Huh? Alright, look. The fuck? Please. You have all of our money. You've already destroyed our lives. Please just go and leave us alone. Look who decided to grow some fucking balls, huh? We, we won't say anything. Just go, please. I guess we have something in common now, huh? We're all orphans, huh? Okay. Okay. Convicts are here. You want me to set up roadblocks? We don't have the manpower to handle the checkpoints. Liaise with the PDs of Marion, Camus, and Pioa. Call Daniels, Richards, Benson, and Oldfield. Tell them I want a hard target search of every house, convenience store, bank, farmhouse, outhouse, and shithouse in the area. Any cars reported stolen in the last 24? Not that I know of. They might still be on foot. It could be close.
about manners. Huh? It's always good manners to take someone's <laughs> coat when they arrive as a guest. You're a mighty fine twosome. I've been in prison a couple of years and you're... You're a goddamn sight for sore eyes. Leave her alone, you fucking animal. Careful. You might get a load in the face. <laughs> You're disgusting. <laughs> Take this one. Take it. Yeah, you got a big mouth. It's like your sister. <laughs> Let's see how fucking big it can go, huh? Open it. Open your mouth. Wide. Stop it, you sick fuck! Shut it! Come on, you little slut. Open your fucking mouth. That's it, nice and wide. Wider. <laughs> Another car's coming. You expecting any of this? No. 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 no, no, no. You expecting anyone? No. Let's take the car and get the fuck out of here, Vaughn. No, 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 no. Not yet. I got some unfinished business. Like what? Like these two joining us upstairs in the bedroom. We're not going anywhere. Sick bastard. Look, that guy could call the cops. We need to get the fuck out of here now. Call the cops and say what? No one was home up here. And 
No one knows we're up here. It's just us and these two girls. Okay. Let's go upstairs, give you something else to swallow. You put anything in my mouth and you'll fucking lose it. No, it's okay. We'll go. Let's get it over with. <laughs> Lynn, just trust me on this. It's gonna be okay. Okay. Lead the way, ladies. I may be getting worried over nothing here, but it's about my brother Richard and his family. They have a holiday cabin just off Oak Grove. I arranged to meet them there this afternoon. They said they'd leave a key out in case they were late. I got there and the car was outside, but no one answered the door. No key left out. Then just as I was leaving, I'm sure I saw something move in the window, like someone was ducking down or something. So, how many are there in the family? My brother Richard, his wife Pat, and their two daughters, Linnea and Tina. I think Pat's mother, Delith, is staying there too. She usually does over the holidays. I have to ask this question, Mr. Anderson. Uh, do you have a positive relationship with the family? Absolutely. I know what you're thinking. That they were hiding from me, but that's not their style. They're not really once for practical jokes, either. Okay. I'm hoping it's nothing, but when I was there, I don't know. It just felt like something was wrong. Okay. Well, uh, Deputy Wilkes and I will take a drive up there soon, and um, we'll take it from there. Okay? Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> Which one of you keeps a diary? I do. This chapter's juicy. <laughs> I sat in Todd's car with him tonight. 
I look forward to it all day, but when it actually happened, I was so nervous. As we kissed, I began to feel excited, and then he slipped his hand in my skirt, and I felt anxious initially, but then eased into it. He is very good with his hands. I got I got so wet with his touch. I told you she's a little slut. Ah, leave her alone. God. You you've been testing my patience all fucking day. But there's something you should know. I ain't keeping you alive because I need a hostage. I could kill you right now. Yes. I want a sample of what you're selling. I've been in prison a while. And I'll be damned if I'm gonna pass on that piece of ass. I'd rather die than let you near me. You're fucking repulsive. Uh, believe it or not, that gets my dick hard. The more you resist. <laughs> Come in, dispatch. This is Redwood. We've had an emergency call from a Richard Anderson. Yeah, what was the nature of the call? He said a cruiser broke into his cabin, killed his wife and mother-in-law. He's severely injured. He said the two intruders, male, are still inside the cabin, holding his daughter's hostage. All right, dispatch. Put a call out to all units. Tell them to go to the Anderson residence at Oak Grove. Tell them Wilkes and I will be there when they arrive. Over. It's gotta be those two convicts. Looks to be that way, yeah. Shouldn't we wait for backup? We can't afford to wait. Just a few minutes could be the difference between life and death. You remember those ones that got away? I'm not adding these guys to the list. What do you want that for? Just fucking go get it. As a guy who went to prison for arson, I guarantee you don't love what I got planned. <laughs> fucking still here? Fucking get it.
Sheriff's Department, put your hands on your head and turn around slowly. I said put your hands on your fucking head now! Don't do it. Don't do it! Don't do it! Mr. Anderson. Don't worry about me. My girls, Linda and Tina, they're, they're upstairs. Go help them. We'll assign you the shittiest ambulance chasing motherfucker you've ever seen to escort you to the gas chamber, bitch. a gun pointed at you? <laughs> Son of a bitch. So this is what makes you feel powerful. This is what makes you feel like a man. Just fucking kill me, because I ain't going back to the fucking joint, all right? Who are you? Maybe I will. But first, I want you to understand one thing. I refuse to be a victim. You've done all you can today to beat me down and make me feel like I'm nothing. You've robbed me of the people I love. Now you have a choice to make. Instant death or live without your balls. You haven't got the fucking guts. If you don't make a decision, I'm gonna have to make it for you. Eeny. Meet me, miney, mo. Catch a bastard by the toe. If he don't holler, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miney, mo. Put the gun down. This piece of shit isn't getting off that. I said put the gun down. He has to pay for what he did. He will. He'll spend the rest of his life in prison. Is that justice? His life will be one of confinement. Worrying every day if he's gonna get attacked by society's worst people. If you kill him now, his suffering will be over. And he won't have to live with what he's done. So put the gun down. It's okay. It's okay, it's okay. You have the right to remain silent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law.
Sheriff, you gotta see this. What is this? It's a tape we got out of a home movie camera in the cabin uh, with the family. I was expecting to see normal family stuff on it, but you gotta check this out. Recording, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here yeah. go, open. All right. What do you got there? Lunea. Dad, love me. How's he supposed to know who me is, huh? Oh, Daddy gets a mug, huh? Yeah, real original. Jesus. You know, you look ugly on this than you do in real life. You fucking kidding me? Fuck you, you piece of shit. You look fucking ugly. Just looking at you. God, it doesn't feel like 10 years. No. No, it feels like only yesterday. Are we gonna go in or? Yeah. That's why we're here. Come on. Too painful. I know it is. It's about feeling the pain and being able to deal with it in a healthy way. I feel like they took my sense of security. 
I can't even walk a block to my car at night without being on edge. But it's made me protective over those I love, even people I don't know. You know, I'm the first to walk up to a girl and ask if that guy's bothering her. Yes, it's, it's given me strength to stand up for myself. Same for me, I guess. Just being able to be back here shows us how far we've come. You know, I was so angry for years after what happened. I just couldn't acknowledge my real feelings because they were too painful. The one thing I learned through all of this is that none of it was our fault. We could never blame ourselves. I know, yeah. It took me a really long time to accept that. Even now, I have to remind myself sometimes. I still regret not having the best relationship with mom. You know, she adored you though, right? Of course, yeah, I loved her too, I, I still do. But since she's, that was weird, I, I almost feel closer to her now. I find myself saying things to the kids that, that mom would have said to me. It's like, it's like she's still with me. God, we've been through a lot. Yeah. But we're still here.